Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right in this video I want to share with you um, a unit, an army list type thing that I've been using. I've had great success with it and um, had to come up with a name for it so I called it the Super Phalanx. Couldn't think of anything else so that's what it's called. Okay so it starts off with one massive squad of warriors. Um, ideally 20 strong or thereabouts um, and what you want to do is stick an overlord in there. Now if you are on the overlord it's quite expensive but um, that's okay we're going to put the points into this unit because this is going to be um, the central part of the whole army. So yeah we're going to have an overlord with the war side of course, uh, mine shackle scarabs, weave, and we're going to go for the labyrinth, uh, resurrection orb and a phase shifter. So fair amount of points in there but um, you'll see what he's going to do for us later. Um, and then yeah 20 warriors. So this is going to be the central piece for this um, super phalanx. Now obviously with the orb uh, and 20 warriors there, it means that you're going to be able to take some, some wounds on these warriors. And ideally you want them in cover if you can, um, or at least you know, walking up into cover. Um, but of course with the resurrection or getting up on fours is pretty awesome. And to, to help the unit survive even further, we have a couple of ghost arcs. It's a two ghost arcs within six inches. Um, just some basic five warriors in there, so I find is enough. And what they're going to do is repair the unit as well. So we're going to really attempt to keep this up, you know, in numbers for as long as humanly possible. And the Overlord, he's going to sit slightly back to the unit. Um, I know he's got his weave save, um, but he's not going to be up front taking the two plus save for the unit. Um, you know, we're not going to use them like we do with the Wraith Lord or the Destroyer Lord. Um, if you know, want to know what I'm talking about, go and check out some of my old videos, tactical videos on those. But no, in this in this scenario, he goes at the back. We want him to survive as long as possible. And obviously we're going to walk forward, we're going to rapid fire. Uh, once stuff gets into range, we have the rapid fire overwatch. Um, if you've still got 20 warriors and they're all in range, that's 40 warriors. Um, obviously I've spread these out here just in case some of my opponents got templates, we don't want to be bunched together too much. And then, of course in the assault, we're going to go for the challenge. Now that is why we have this guy in here. This is my storm tech. Um, so what the storm tech's going to do, he's going to A, he's going to give you the uh, lightning field attacks. So that's um, when when the enemy assaults you, they, they immediately suffer D6 strength 8 hits. Okay, it's AP5, but it's strength 8. Um, pretty useful, especially if you get a reasonable number on the dice roll. Um, he's also there to accept um, and issue sort of wasted challenges, really. Um, you don't want to waste a challenge on the Lord. Um, so if a unit assaults you and he's got a big buff guy and just a little basic sergeant, if you issue a challenge with the Lord, you know, he might say, yeah, I'll accept that, and he'll accept it with the, the basic sergeant. Um, it's sort of wasted, so, you know, you can use the cryptic to your advantage so you don't waste a challenge, basically. Um, and then, of course, the Lord, he's going to go in eventually, um, ideally in a challenge, fantastic for taking out the Warlord point. Um, also good for helping the combat resolution. Um, against you know in the in the main combat so what he's going to do is he's going to do his mind shackle scarabs um, and then if it's worthwhile because you can only use it once um, but the labby have a go at the labby it was an amazing piece of war gear um, I know you can only use it once um, and you, you use it instead of your close combat attacks um, but basically yeah um, if in base contact um, must roll equal or less than the remaining wounds on a d6. If he fails, remove the model with no armor saves of any kind, with no saves of any kind allowed. Um, so basically, you know, on that single dice roll, if, you, if your enemy rolls bad, the model's removed. It's fantastic for taking out characters. Just that extra little piece of war gear, extra little surprise. Um, fantastic. So yeah, that's how I'm using that unit. I'm backing up the phalanx um, with some annihilation barges. You cannot go wrong with annihilation barges. Don't forget the understung gun. Well, in my opinion, it's best to use Tesla. Um, these guys are going to be moving every single game. Oh, just come out the stand. Um, they're going to be moving every single game because you want to get your jinx save, which means 
you know, the, the understun gun is going to need sixes to hit, and we all know what sixes does with Tesla, so I would go for Tesla all the way there. And over this side, we have some uh, obviously wraiths. Go for the wraith now, depending on the points. If I had the points, 2000 point game, or normally pay 1750, but if I had the points, I'd go for the wraith lord as well, the destroyer lord at the front, um, with his two plus save, just really helps keep that unit alive. I've sort of deployed them here. I mean, if you if you have first turn, fantastic. You move all your vehicles to get your jinx saves. If you don't have first turn, you need to be deploying these to get saves. Uh, so I'd have like one one of these vehicles that are half hidden behind a piece of terrain. Uh, you've got your wraiths. Obviously, they can give you cover saves. Um, the annihilation barges can give you cover saves. You try and get the, the use the terrain to your advantage. And try to make sure you get everything with a cover save when you deploy. Um, especially if there's no night fight, or in, even if there is night fight as well, um, you know you'll you'll need that save. Behind the flanks, uh, put the nose so I don't forget. But I would recommend at least a small unit of something troops wise, just to hold your main backfield objective. Um, I've been using the uh, defence line myself, working really well so far. Um, I've also got my backup troops. You can see this flank here is going to be moving forward. Um, my backup troops are over there in the night scythe, that's reserves, uh, comes on, depending on the situation, that's a very manoeuvrable unit of immortals, uh, so troops, and I also put the Bell of Darkness uh, cryptic in there as well, so you know, if that gets destroyed, uh, they'll come on from reserve, okay they can't veil straight away, but next turn they can veil, um, yeah go and check out my tactics, um, my night scythe tactic kill video that I've already done on that. Right, and the last thing is just to have a quick chat about objectives. So, um, let's say we're playing a mission with uh, four objectives. Obviously, the missions will vary depending on how many objectives and points values and stuff. But what I'd be looking to do is put one objective at the back there uh, in the defence line. Now, obviously, you have to be mindful of your opponent, so you may have to change your deployment slightly depending on what your opponent has. Maybe keep wraith back, etc. So, just be mindful of that. Your opponent, he's going to be putting his objective, probably one at the back again to hold. That's fine, he can have that objective, we're going to let him have that one. Um, my next objective, I'll be looking to put about midfield, um, just in front of one of my ghost arcs, because this unit here isn't going to get an objective. You know, it's not designed to get an objective, it's going to go out, it's going to cause damage, it's going to attract attention, um, it's going to take losses. I mean, to be fair, once it starts to get quite low, I would actually probably start you know, running back with this unit, um, especially if I've got Slay the Warlord, I don't want to give up my Slay the Warlord. So, you know, this isn't really going to be um, looking to take an objective, but the Ghost Arcs with the Warriors in may be, so I'll be looking to, to put this forward of the Ghost Arc, um, ideally in terrain, ideally if there's a line of sight piece here blocking terrain, that would be fantastic. Move the Ghost Arc up, it's going to take shots. Um, if it goes down, if it doesn't go down, the warriors are going to eventually guess out on the objective. You know, they'll go to ground, they'll hunker in, try to capture the objective. My opponent, well, he could put his objective anywhere, of course, and that is why we have this fast-moving unit over here. So yeah, this can, um, especially with the Veil of Darkness guy in there, you know, it's got a massive a range at the board that it can go to, so it can contest. Obviously the, the vehicle can't, but the guys inside can get out and contest. I've got the wraiths, um, you know, they potentially might be at, there at the end. You know, possibly even the group there to contest. Just a few ideas. Um, I think we probably need a separate video on objectives and tactics for objectives, but uh, that's one for the future. So that's it for now. That's my super flanks. Hopefully you enjoyed it, uh, got something else of it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.